why don't we print nice pictures and put them on the wall? It seems a bit of a shame to me because having pictures mouldering away in the dungeon of a hard drive somewhere is a bit of a shame. I know I've done a video about this before a few years ago, but I just thought I'd come back and get another take on it, take another look at it. And to do that, I thought it might be an idea to have a chat with somebody who you know, because you've seen him in some of my videos before, and he's a very well-respected man, and he's now to be found here at One Vision Imaging. Let's go see if we can find him. Do you remember Adam Scorey? Editor of Digital SLI User Magazine, Turning Pro Magazine. Photography Monthly. Photography Monthly Magazine. He was, in the, he was in the magazine, How to Do a Photography Magazine series we did, and yeah. in other things. You may remember I kissed him at the end of one of them. <laughs> yeah, I deleted that from my memory, I'm afraid. But Adam is now, what are you now, Adam? I'm the Design, Product and Marketing Manager for a company called One Vision Imaging. And that means you? I communicate stuff. Um, I talk about the products we do, the services we have, and I communicate that to an audience of customers and non-customers, basically. Mm. So, mm. same sort of job. I talk about stuff, probably a bit too much. Mm. But, uh, yeah, I extol the virtues of uh, what we do as a business, how we do it, and how this can benefit our customer, really. And what are your views on what, what, what is this thing? You know, why don't people get things printed? What are your thoughts about printing pictures? Why should people get their images printed as opposed to leaving them gathering digital dust and sort of old stale pixels and things <laughs> mouldering away in a hard drive in a yeah. dark corner of a cupboard? Uh, do you know, this is something that I spoke about when I was in the magazine industry, talking about, you know, with the most... Uh, this, this has probably been heard by people a lot, about with the most photographed generation in history, and yet, you know... In, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, we have nothing to show for it. You know, um, we record everything on our telephones these days and, and we, you know, we drop them, smash them and we go, oh, blast, you know, we've, uh, I've lost all those precious pictures. But we take so many pictures now, you know, are they really the ones that matter? So why, why don't we print? I think it's become unfashionable. I think it became very difficult initially. You know, there was a fad to go and buy yourself a home printer and, oh, I can print up to A3 uh, with my digital camera that produces brilliant photographs and it should be so very easy. But bugger, was it? Certainly not. It was a pain in the ass. Calibrating printers to monitors to because you had to calibrate your monitor. Yep. You had to calibrate your printer to yep. the monitor. Yep. You then got to colour control everything within yep. your your digital environment. Yeah, a, a, a nightmare. Um, because it, one thing, it wasn't one thing. It wasn't simple. It wasn't press and go. And I think that was the biggest problem. And it became very expensive because prister, printers, printers, printers weren't consistent. They Maybe became, that's his sister. <laughs> yeah. Um, printers. Pr printers weren't consistent. Uh, it was very difficult for the uh, non-technical person to get a consistent print from a common or garden printer. Printing inks became very expensive because, you'd, you know, it was a four-to-one ratio. So you'd print mm. four pictures and only mm. one of them would turn out any good. So uh, uh, there's a desktop footprint your printer has, and, and it was just another thing to learn. Yeah, sure. But, I mean, don't you think that, that surely in this day, day, everybody's sacrificing quality for convenience. Everyone wants yeah. convenience. So, you know, the food might be quite, might not be as good in the supermarket, but it's convenient to shop there rather yeah. than go to the butchers and the bakers and etc. So is it just, do you think, a case of convenience, having things on your phone, as opposed to, you know, having something beautiful, you know, like this, like this lovely thing here made, you know? I, I think it is. There's fashion. Convenience is a massive part of it, I think. I think fashion or trends certainly uh, play a part of that. Um, I think people don't have the time that they used to to go and spend on their hobby. You know, we truncate our time during the week into that's work time, you know, and sorting out some of the practical things. By the time it actually gets to the point where you could, you know, go out and take some pictures, you're knackered, you know, and it, you truncate that into the weekend and then the light's crap or the weather's crap. And uh, so they're hitting, you know, that, that plays a part uh, in it too. We're very busy people. We do want convenience uh, and we want simplicity, which means that, again, it's kind of, oh, I can't be bothered. You know, and we look at the stuff on the wall and say, well, you know, I'll just go down to Ikea and get something that's off the shelf and that'll do because it's the right colour. But it's nothing like satisfying as, as seeing no. your own picture on the wall. But there's also a legacy element to this as well. You're putting someone else's legacy on your wall. Surely you would want to put the image on your wall that has a particular memory for you. It's precious to you. It may be your children, grandchildren, maybe a dog. It may be, you know, like I've got a particular love of Rome for, for whatever reason and I'm putting a picture that's really important to me on my wall. I can walk past that every day and remember, you know, that date, that meal, that, you know, taking that beautiful picture and seeing those sights, smelling those things again. And, and that's what I think 
photography is about. It's capturing those memories, preserving them, turning them into something precious and meaningful, and reliving that. You know, our, mm. our, my memory's terrible. So remembering that, and, and you tend to remember more of the little details, you know, the smells, the sounds, you know, the, the, the traffic sounds in Rome, the smell of the food, you know, the, the, the sipping of the wine and the voices and stuff and the, the warm wind. So all of that isn't really conveyed in quite the same way on your iPhone screen or your No, tablet. totally, totally. And also what you just said there struck a chord with me. It's like if you've got you've got any of these pictures. I mean, I love this one here of, of you know London, of uh, you know the Houses of Parliament and and, and Big, a, ben. A, a Big Ben and the bridge and all that kind of stuff. But it's like yeah, if you're there, you got that on your wall. You walk past it and, it, and it's just like a little a little thing in the corner of your eye. How often do we get our phone out mm, and just yeah. get a thing in the corner of the eye? Okay, you can change your desktop you know, thing, you can change your desktop picture, but uh, I would assert that these days we're kind of like in such a rush on the phone, you don't bother to look at things. No. And no. think about maybe having this in your environment. You also touched, so, so the memory thing, mm. I mean, I know I've had a lot of pleasure. We, we've got some old photos, this is maybe something that happens as you get older, but like, there's a load of photos what from when we were kids that were <laughs> prints, you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's much older than me. <laughs> um, there, was, there was a load of pictures that we found, you know, from when we were kids. And of yeah. course, when I was a kid, it was, there wasn't anything digital in what. No, no. But there's a huge amount of pleasure to be had actually looking at some of those old pictures. Yeah, do you there think is. people look at old family pictures when they, you know, what do they do with these things? They're sitting on the phone, on the hard drive, in the cloud? Well, th this is exactly it, you know. I think something physical, is uh, it better? I, I think definitely, because there is, there's, you know, we talk about legacy in photography quite a lot and legacy in life generally. I want to hand down to my children something real to them. There's, there's, you know, do we end up putting hard drives in, in bank vaults? Do we end up putting our, you know, keeping all our old telephones? Or, you know, how can we uh, legally say, well, that iCloud account is mine, that's going to be passed on, you know? Passed on, yeah, I mean, an iCloud account. So what happens? Um, I don't know, somebody dies. Hmm. They're leaving, I don't know, wife, kids, whatever. Yeah. So once upon a time, all those old photo albums came to be passed Shoe down. boxes in the loft. Yeah, totally. Yeah, 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 yeah. Carrier bags and yeah. stuff. You know, this is yeah. where we found our Trannies. stuff. yeah. So, yeah, that's the, I'd never thought of that. You, you, so you've got your iCloud account with all your kids growing up and all that kind of cool stuff and all those family holidays. What happens to those pictures? Exactly. Do they sit and go through, you know, how, how many images do you shoot, shoot these days? You know, on holiday, I shot 300 pictures on my iPhone and, and I shot probably about another 200 on my X-Pro1. And... That's 500 pictures from a two-week period. You, you know, trunk, uh, uh, multiply that up for every year for 40 years of taking pictures. My God, is there going to be some sort of legacy there to go through? Who's going to want to do that? You know, it, there's an element mm. of that. But also, I think what the physical picture does, it, 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 it's tangible. It has value. And it, what it enables you to do is have it in front of you. It, it, it's all those little things come flooding back that you've utterly forgotten. Um, and they're the precious things. Mm. I think you don't get that same uh, sense of emotion and pull from an image on your telephone. Now, although it looks fantastic and the quality of images mm. you can get, I'm not denying mm. that, but having that legacy that you can, you know, a, a photo book or an album or prints on the wall or, you know, little, little uh, digital prints that you can print off, you say, any sort of thing like that, I think we're at a danger of losing all of our history uh, uh, in one foul swoop. Uh, and, and this isn't just about people dying, this is about, uh, you know, uh, illness. It's, it's about... Um, it, it's about stop uh, assuming or, or thinking that the image, that a print is old-fashioned. Oh, you don't want to do that, it's old-fashioned. I only want sort of like a Polaroid or a, the Impossible Project's new mm. sort of Polaroid system, because that's funky and brilliant. Is it, though? Mm. I think you've got to... Uh, I think give more respect to your hobby, to your pastime, to those precious moments. I totally get it. And it's like, it's so easy now. I mean, what's this? This is, how big is this? This is a 12 or 16? 16, 16, 12, yeah. 16, yeah. 12. How much yeah. does 16, 12 cost? Well, four or five quid. Four or five quid. Okay, so four or five quid. You can get a picture frame that takes you 16 by 12 hmm. and say, let's say, let's say, actually, there's one of my pictures yep. here. There we go. In fact, I'm going to choose that one because lots of people have seen it. So there you go, there's a picture of mine there. So let's say that's my current favourite because my favourite changes all the time. Yeah. I've got a frame, I've got a 1612, and I stick it on the wall and I go, yeah, I love that. And I walk past it and I remember the cold of being in Iceland and all those exactly, kind of things. Yeah. Very personal to you and, and it brings back all of that stuff. It's very personal to stuff. me. But then after, I don't know, a month or two, you think, yeah, I like that one, but I've just been looking through some other pictures and I've decided that actually, I like this one here. That's now my favourite. 
you know? And, and I think that's for one of the fiber, issues. You've changed your wall art because you've still got the same... You're still using exactly the same yeah. um, frame on the wall. Yeah, I, I think there, there, there's a lot to that. I mean, uh, photography is uh, certainly used to be a very expensive hobby. You know, you'd buy your print film, you'd get it processed, and then you'd have to think mm. about, well, where do I get my prints made and mm. what size? And, and, you know, you'd spend £10 per 36 images, roughly, to do that. And then, you know, you go to the print stage. These days, you can shoot 3,000 pictures, and it costs you a charge of a cam camera battery, 2p. Mm. You know, so um, we devalued, to a certain extent, devalued images uh, uh, to, uh, as you described it, digital dust, I mean, a phrase that I used a long time ago, actually, and it's a good way to describe it. So, you know, arguably, yeah, should we be taking less pictures? Well, does it matter? No. Just, I would say, create more memories. Mm. Like, take as many pictures, but create more memories. Exactly, and I think there's two sorts of photography here as well. You've got, you've got memory pictures. Yeah. Those old pictures snaps. of me as kids, snaps. Yeah. You know, my brother's got a huge archive of, of my two nephews growing up, which mm. is, you know, it's a great record, which didn't exist that so legacy, for our generation, that yeah. legacy. Yeah. Those are memory pictures, but then you've got, you know, artistic pictures, you've got beautiful pictures, you've got things like, you know, so somebody's gone to a lot of trouble to shoot that, someone's, you know, set up and they're using a slow shutter speed, they've got yeah. the light perfect and all the rest of it, they put time and effort yeah. to create... <clears throat> that's a visual. That's visual photography, and then there's memory. Yeah, it, well, photography. it's kind of artwork. Yeah, and I think. And sometimes you can combine the two. Uh, yes, very much so. But the other thing here, of course, is um, if you look at co photographic competitions. How do they judge quality? I mean, we, you know, coming into OVI, we very much, we, we always talk about this quality message. And what does that really mean? You know, for us, it means we've got people who are experts in their field looking at this stuff, using their judgment and interpreting the photographer's vision and then creating on print what the photographer wanted. Now, um, from my point of view, um, print, I think, should be considered the the bastion of quality, regardless of where you get it done. I don't want to be partisan just to one vision, but mm. it, it's a level playing field. Look at the competitions like the Taylor Wessing Portrait Prize. You look at the Pink Lady Food Photography Awards. You look at the SWPP. You look at the Royal Photographic Society. They judge, the Comedy Wildlife Photography Awards, they judge people's work on print. They look at the print and say, right, this is the baseline of quality. This is, we can say, uh, uh, creates consistency. It's a level playing field. That's what we should judge images by. Mm. Now, I think that almost should become a challenge to people. Is my, are my pictures good enough to go on print? Mm. So it kind of it, it, it adds value to it, but it also adds that lovely challenge element to say, well, you know, perhaps what I should be doing is having a place in my home that is for my photography, and I will commit to once a month changing one of those images. Now, I don't care if you have a frame, have a double window mount, you know, all that sort of stuff, but at least commit to uh, respecting your hobby, the craft, the artwork, the, the, you know, the, the hundreds of hours of effort you put into this, the passion, the expense to a certain extent, because all well, your camera gear and the travelling and all the rest of it. But creating that legacy on mm. a wall, even if it's a bit of blue tack or a bit of masking tape, you know, and creating a, a, a bit of artwork on the back of a door, and they can be all different sizes, but just relishing in this, you know, that's what it's about. Mm. And it's about mm. going, you know, this resonates with you, you pick this one up, but this one for me, I've been to Iceland, and I can look at that and I can imagine the wind on my face, the cold it in the air. Windy. There's a video of me shooting that picture on YouTube, but it, yeah, it was windy. But that's what it's about. I won't get the same sense of emotion because I can't see the detail. Like, you know, I can see here the resolution mm. of the image where you've used a rel relatively wide aperture, mm. but I can see the fronds of the grass. I can see a bit of movement in the grass. I can see the, the very old rusty nails that made the boat. And I, I would assume they don't use that boat anymore to do fishing or anything, but you know, it, it means something and I can interpret and I can pull a story and narrative. And I'm a, being a journalist, an ex-journalist, I love stories. Mm. And I think this is, again, this is what our picture should be doing. It should be creating a narrative for us that we can go back to. Looking back isn't a pejorative thing to do, it isn't a negative thing to do. It should be something we celebrate, looking back at our, you know, weddings, yes, of course, looking back at holidays, but all those silly things, you know, I've got a puppy. And I love looking back at, and seeing the growth of two. my dog. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to distract. Go on, you've got a puppy. Uh, uh, oh, OK, he's a year old now, but I love looking back and seeing the pictures, you know, the extreme growth that dogs go through. Humans obviously are a lot slower, but, you know, I've got... My, my kids are 16 and 18 now, but my partner's children are seven. And, in, you know, even in the short, you know, two years that I've been with my partner mm. and seeing that growth uh, in your children, those memories are important, but even the little things, like... On holiday, you know, finding that little snapshot that you've taken on your telephone and printing it out on a, on a you know, sort of product we call 10 squared, 
it's a lovely little moment that I, I create these. Things. I've got these up in my home, mm. uh, the magnetic uh, mm. things where you can swap in them out mm. loads of times. So I can take last year's holiday and replace them with New Year's. Uh, it's not expensive and it's a fun thing to do because... It is. It is. It's lovely. But it's, and it's also, for my way of thinking as well, besides the memory thing, when I mean, you've got a picture on the wall, you're kind of rewarding yourself mm. with the feel-good factor. It yeah. goes back to something you said a while ago before I was being irreverent and fooling around. It was like you put all that effort into going to the location, into mm. getting your camera equipment, into putting all that, investing all that effort into learning light, composition, yeah. photography, how to join all the different techniques together and, and think it all through and put it together so you've got this amazing image. It's a feel-good factor. Yeah. It's a, it's a wow, well, I did that. And it's like a little bit of self-satisfaction. This isn't about raving and going, oh, aren't I great, I'm the best. It's like, I did that, I went there, and it's a lovely little reward, it, it, I think. think. Think about it with clothing, you know, you don't buy a really nice shirt and then leave it in a cupboard. You know, with pictures, you take a really lovely picture and then you don't look at it again <laughs> for ages. It, That's it, it, a brilliant analogy. It, you, you just, you wouldn't do it. And Why the same put with all that else? effort into going to these amazing locations, take these stunning pictures and then leave it in a cupboard? OK, there are photo viewing sites all over the place, as many viewers, you know, as you do, you know, Clickersnap. Well, yeah. you may not know this, viewers. You know I'm involved with Clickersnap, but so is Adam, actually, mm. and in an yeah. increasing role, that's a different story. But it's like, yeah, there's still kind of, it's less personal. Mm. Okay, it's a public display, and that's, that's great for the, the pretty picture thing. But again, the, the, the personal thing, if you can combine it all together. So, what goes into, will you share me around? Will you take yeah, sure, let's go yeah. down, let's go and have a quick around. So if you're five quid, you're four ninety nine. Well, whatever the print cost, whatever yeah. Whatever the I print mean, cost it, is, depending on how big it is and all that kind of stuff. Yep. For your four ninety nine, let's see what you're getting. Come and show me. We're gonna go and have a look around, viewers. So in part two, come and see us. We're gonna go and have a look and see. So what goes into this? Why is it so cost effective? And the massive investment that people like OVI and many other brilliant, brilliant, brilliant printers around the country uh, put into this around the world. Are available. Yeah, <laughs> other pro labs are available. Um, in fact, you've, I think you've met at least one of mine, uh, another, not OVI. Um, you know, so what goes into that? What do you get for your 4 95 I think it's pretty impressive. Okay. Shall we go? Cut. It's bloody warm in here. It is a bit warm, actually. I'm getting sweaty just because you're near me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go see if we can find him. Idiot. Have you got funny noises from Scory because he's rubbing his microphone on his nipples? Subscribe to our YouTube channel to be notified each time we upload one of our cool photography videos. Or for more great photo tips, workshops and training, come and see us at our website, photographycourses.biz.